my life. Goodness gracious. My chick, my chick. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our morning, 9 a.m. Uh, London session lives. Just quickly, could I get a mic check? Can anybody confirm that they can hear me? Is anyone watching? Um, Yo, I'm alive. Yeah, so I've got feedback in my ears, so that means definitely you guys can hear me. But yeah, hope you guys are doing well, man. So let's just get cracking. Like markets are continuing on their downward path, and I'm talking about you know a lot of your risky assets. But let's let's have a look here. So I, you know, Bitcoin, uh, uh, you know, its market cap today. No, not Bitcoin. Sorry, the entire crypto market is about 1.9 trillion US dollars. Which is kind of like down, right? And if you notice, Bitcoin, the, the biggest, you know, puncher is reacting to that strong supply that I told you guys about yesterday, right? I'm, I'm very Bitcoin, uh, uh, that Bitcoin is not only in a bull market, but in a bull cycle when it breaks that supply. Until then, uh, we're still in a bull market, but in a, in a, in a short term bearish cycle or, or, or what some call a market correction. Some people believe we're in a long, a big, big market correction. Right, so you know, not much happening there. Um, I, I didn't try to sell at that supply right now. Ethereum down quite a bit. Tether, you know, you know how Tether goes. Uh, nothing there. You know, this is a good. This is really good price for the stuff. XRP, please buy it. Salan, beautiful run to 100 US dollars. Cardano, you know, a lot of Cardano fans believe you know it'll get to five bucks. I I, I don't care. I mean, I'm just holding. Um, you know, all right. So, so I, I was looking at the stuff before we started our live, right? So, let's get to what we normally do together in these mornings. Um, you know, those of you who pay attention, you'll notice that ADP did happen yesterday. Uh, just once again, guys, please, please, just for for for, for my own sanity, um, can I get a mic check? Uh, but but I'm gonna assume that if no one complains about audio, it means you guys can hear me loud and clear. Maybe I should do that moving forward. Right, so pre-markets, we can see that, you know, you know, equities are, are, are kind of doing okay. I mean, there was like a range, right? Um, um, you know, if you quickly look at NASDAQ yesterday, S&P 500 was the only good trade we took in the senior traders program in the afternoon. But uh, NASDAQ, we, 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 we fared away from it because it's kind of like broken a supply, but hasn't really landed at a very good demand for us to go short term long and more importantly I, I really have no personally no interest in buying nasdaq right now right um a good buy was all the way down here all right where where we experience market capitulation uh if you go with the 15 minutes time frame maybe somewhere there but ever since then i personally haven't really been in the mood to buy nasdaq so i haven't uh but s p 500 did offer us a, a, you know some some some, some good short-term longs Right, so so you can see that price is just kind of like floating inside this gray scale supply, gray because it's broken, but you know there is some type of market memory. But this is the real test, right? This is the real test for the end of this market correction cycle, for the end of this bear market. It's somewhere up here. Bitcoin has arrived at its um, yellow supply, right? So Bitcoin is somewhere up here right now, dealing with 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 these problems, right? So 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 Nasdaq might follow suit in equities. Or we can see uh, a, a, a downturn, um, and and like I said, it's all based on 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 market sentiment, right? Thank you, David. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All right. So now, what's been going on? Fighting enters second week, right? Ukrainians are still holding. Um, African leaders condemn Russia but remain silent, etc. Um, yeah. There's a lot going on, you know. You know, when it comes to the war. Uh, sorry, guys. Just give me two seconds. Right, um, uh, right. European markets head for mixed opening as Russian tensions weigh. Um, stock futures muted. Right, so you guys remember this? U.S. Capitol riot panel uh, says Trump may have engaged in. Okay, come on, man. Who cares about Trump right now? Who cares about Trump right now? Um, 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 then there's CNBC talks and all sorts of things um, going on. Asian Pacific stocks. I don't know if you guys saw, but right, uh, China, you know, won't sanction Russia because they are long-term allies. But also China 
is slowly but surely starting a slight war of its own with Taiwan. Yeah, um, I, um, I, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, um, but, but there was a ship sighted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hong Kong is not going to be under the rule of law. Okay, wow, all right, that's weird. Putin's obsession with Ukraine has made analysts question his rationality. I saw people call him Mad Putin. I saw a, a, a journalist talking about how this phone looks not very well coordinated, not very well planned. Um, you know that some Russian tanks ran out of fuel. Russian soldiers were potentially begging for food. Right? You, you, when it comes to war, you, you can't believe everything, uh, you know, because everyone is reporting their side of the story the way history needs to remember it. Right? But yeah. Chinese will not, there we go, China will not join the sanctions against Russia. Uh, Russia is frustrated with the pace, so they thought it was going to be an easy invasion. It's technically not right now, etc. Right. So, so now let's come here where the real news is. Sorry, it's just this is part of what we do. We have to do this so we get the sentiment of the day. Right. So Biden's administration is looking at ways to cut U.S. consumption of Russian oil. Right, you know, you would have thought this was the first thing that have done with all the sanctions going on. Um, and then you know, tech giant Oracle says it has suspended all operations in the Russian Federation. Biden says Russia is responsible for human rights abuses. You know, big talk America, Russian military deaths from invading Ukraine vary depending on who you ask. Like I said, I, I don't believe most of the war headlines in terms of who's winning. Uh, um, you know, counts because it all plays on propaganda, right? Russia is to be deleted from all FTSE equity indexes. Okay, that's interesting, right? U.S. Senator, uh, you know, predictions of martial law for Russia. Okay, you know, people stay indoors. You know, it's almost like a COVID lockdown, but worse. Uh, remove Russian indexes from emerging market status. So Russia has just been removed from the markets. You know, they remove them from SWIFT. They pretty much, you know, crashed their, 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 their stock exchange. And now they're removing them from global baskets, right? Like FTSE 100, etc. The World Bank has stopped all of its programs in Russia, right? So any funding in Belarus is gone. Uh, you know, Fitch downgrades Russia. You know, this, this really doesn't affect us unless you are invested in Russian stocks, which I don't think anyone is. You know, more from Fed's Logan, markets are functioning in an orderly way. This is interesting, right? So apart from everything going on, Markets are actually functioning in an orderly way, right? So, so, so that would explain, you know, that risk midterm sentiment on ish, right? Reports that the U.S. has delivered hundreds of Stinger surface air missiles to Ukraine, so they're getting the the, the, the missiles and the support that was promised. Logan says the impact of the Ukrainian war will take time to become clear. I agree on that. Um, uh, Powell yesterday says Fed will take tightening at measured pace. So, so if you guys watch yesterday's live, Powell was strong. He was like, look, man, the war is happening and I'm going to leave that to the politicians. I have one job and one job to the American people and it's to secure the dollar, encourage economic growth and better employment numbers. And that's what we've been doing. He's quite strong. He was quite, I guess, hawkish, you know, in many ways, but also very resolute. So, so, so he showed no panic about the war. He didn't give in to any details about the Fed policies around the war so we still don't know he just said that look their job is not to they, they can't even sanction anyone they basically layers with the government so he kept those cards you know close to their chest he did talk about a definite or it sounded like a definite 0 0.25 basis point interest rate hike on the 16th of march so that's definitely coming um, um and, and you're going to see markets you know markets move more rapidly when the when the market news is uncertain now that it's so certain and clear you know, markets are going to start pricing that in, uh, you know, the closer we get to 16 March, especially after NFP, right? U.S. stocks closed higher with solid gains. This was yesterday. Uh, the biggest winner yesterday was the S&P 500. Helen, very anti-crypto, this lady here. Treasury Secretary says Putin increasingly on an economic island, right? So she's doing her best to make sure, he, uh, you know, Russia uh, and all those sanctions, blah, blah, blah. But she also wants... Uh, crypto out of the picture in general, not just about Russia, but in general. And I think this will be a window to try and get serious, crazy regulation. So just watch out for this name, Helen, this old granny. Um, 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 I, we used to track her, her talks uh, uh, um, last year, and it was always interesting because she used to be, she, she gets paid about, you know, 400 to 500,000 US dollars 
by banks to kind of like give these talks year on year. And really, she represents the, the, the old school classic um, uh, banking sector, Fiat, right? She's this is a currency lady, very anti-crypto. Um, um, she used to be a former Fed chair, all right? So she literally knows how FOMC operates. And now she's literally in Biden's ear, all right? So the tre treasury sector is a very powerful position. And it doesn't help that she looks like she fought in 1996 as well in the First World War, which means she's old school and potentially quite anti-crypto. Whenever she talks about crypto, markets react bearishly, right? And, 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 and I know deep down in my heart, she's definitely going to use the current Russian mess to explain why uh, or, or use as an example and a determinant of why, you know, crypto at the very least needs to be regulated. In fact, Powell yesterday when he was asked about well, what do you think about Russia and using crypto? Powell said, well, it, it's a perfect case for Congress to quickly regulate. So remember, regulate doesn't mean cancel, ban, or destroy. Regulate means put in measures of control so that, you know, it, 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 there are rules and regulations, terrorists can use it, etc. But because it's government, you know, whenever they put in measures of control, it's hardly ever to the benefit of everyone. So just watch out for that. Uh, crude oil 110. This was about you know last night, last night now, right about 110. I think we're a little bit higher today. Ukraine East Israeli company says airstrike hit near you know the rail stations. Uh, the partition bill to block Russia's oil imports is in the works. Um, just just to Russia sanctions. I saw India is interested in working with Russia on trade agreements, right? So India is like, we don't want to do war. But if Russia no longer has allies for people to trade with, right, maybe we can broker a nice clean deal. Russia sends their goods to India, India pays. And then all of a sudden, I noticed that because of that, America threatened sanctions to India for, 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 for kind of like, you know, getting into bed with Russia. So, so that's all out there, right? Inflation, inflation pressures have intensified in the recent days with the Ukrainian war. You know, Ukraine, just before the war, when, uh, well, that, that's actually a waste of time. They didn't legalize crypto as a tender, but did not unregulate it. They actually said it was cool. And, and the, 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 I think they were working on getting it as, as, as a tender. So uh, I can see Ukraine pushing for that. Um, with all the donations they've received, I can see Ukraine during the war, after the war, immediately moving to Bitcoin as a tender for their country like El Salvador, right? I mean, that would be a big win for crypto markets. And I think that would be the natural direction. So just remember that when you see that, you will see the pumps there as well. All right. So power testimony is over. This was day one. There's going to be another one today, which I won't be watching because it's already said everything I need. Everything else will have to do with American people. Right. I think we can stop here, guys. Uh, Russia has become more aggressive in targeting infrastructure. That's how war works. Ukraine says 498 soldiers have died, right? In Ukraine, 159 soldiers have been uh, wounded. Like I say, you know, these numbers, man, only history can tell us the accurate truth, right? So, so yeah, so we'll stop here because now we're just looking at last night's headlines, right? So we've got, you know, positive future markets, right? Um, you know, NAS features a little bit down, but you know, nothing too crazy. Oil now at 114, all right? So, so, so that's, that's, absolutely impressive FTSE opens quite positively today okay uh and then you know the usual oils are doing well all the bread oil natural gas etc etc your gold is is faring okay like gold almost went down and came back up bounced back to about 1930 right your silver is doing well copper platinum palladium just basically the stuff that we've been talking about right now gold pledges for a fed a surges fears of aggressive rate hike right remember Yesterday, Powell said definitely, definitely we're going to increase uh, the rates. But because of this, dollar is going to be the main horse. And if it is, you know, gold might see a rotation of money. Right. So I just want to quickly show you the DXY chart and then we'll get into our usual charting routine. I don't necessarily have anywhere to, to, to rush off to. So today we'll be able to finish our 10 uh, our London session charts today. Right. So you can see this is. Uh, yesterday's chart. Actually, guys, it's so worth me showing you this. It it really is. The problem is, I have so many tabs on my computer. I might not be able to find it. But this, this is our morning session yesterday. This is our morning session yesterday. If you'll allow me to quickly play it for you, 
It's like a 10 second clip. Um, just in case you're wondering if this thing is actually worth your time. So yesterday, just before NFP, this were what I thought was going to happen. It accurately because you know quite incredible right so 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 that's one particular potential option option number two is quite simple right adp might actually be positive off the bat dollar is already priced that in off the bat and so this upward rally might just continue rip out of supply have a short retracement in some way here and then keep going up in preparation for nfp preparation for 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 for, for, for the um increase of, of the interest rate right? all, all, all this stuff that we always talk about on the channel granted for me option one that i gave you all right so, so this is literally yesterday so yesterday we we're just talking about you know the different options that could actually exist if um if 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 what, what's it called if you know nft comes out positive or negative and 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 more importantly right the most important part about it is we were trying to mirror and definitely see you know, as, as, as a matter of fact, how we can potentially, right, before it actually happens, slowly but surely learn to start predicting news events. And because of where the dollar was, and I think there was somewhat of a yellow supply somewhere here, you know, this is on the one hour time frame. Uh, if, if you remember the video, all of this wasn't there. So if I can cut off NF ADP dropped at about four of us three yesterday. So, and then we do our morning lives at 9 a.m. So this, this is the chart that we had yesterday, right? So all of this was not there. I wanna quickly remove it for you so you can see what has happened since then. So that's 10 a.m., right? So I had to go at, at about 10. So we, we, this is all we had. And, and I say to you, because of how markets are priced in and how markets are moving, somewhere in here, let's make this yellow because it was a supply, right? If ADP is positive, right, because of this already ongoing uh, 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 onslaught, right, and the fact that price was very close to creeping up to taking out a supply, when ADP drops, you're going to get an upward movement to take out the supply. If it's positive, price will still drop down to collect more buys and then extend to the upside in preparation for NFP. And that's exactly what pretty much has happened now, right? So markets have opened the doors, taken out a supply, another supply on the DXY chart, and now we, 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 we wait patiently to see what the next move is. As far as I can tell on price, the next, uh, and I think Trevor put this up on the public group or private group. I just, I, I remember someone talking about a 98 mark. But yeah, the next supply on the daily time frame is all the way up here. And it's not even a perfect read, right? Because if we look on the weekly, uh, you'll see a, a broadly marked like a weekly range around it. Right? So this is where we are right now. And we've, all, we've basically opened the door for here we've taken this whole thing out with this choppy upward movement and the next big 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 target for the dollar is up there now if you come to the daily that kind of almost summarizes this area you know to, to what we have marked out here now granted let me start removing some broken supplies along the way nfp is coming tomorrow and you know what 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 was the most interesting about the adp report uh, i mean I've, I've got a, a 20 30 minute video around what powell said yesterday and i touched on the adp report so you'll see that they but you know they've never done that before they've, they've never gone and by the way you know the results from last month well we revised them last month we said we found minus three hundred thousand jobs well guess what we have revised those results that has never happened you know as far uh, at least for as long as I've been tracking these reports and I print all of them and I read them, you know, you know, you know, you know, very much, you know, studiously so that I, I never, ever, ever, ever miss out on stuff. And I was thoroughly, you know, almost surprised and taken aback about not only their, their, all the results from last their, their, sorry about that, their, their, their honesty, but also the fact that they're worried about, I guess, the reputation of the, you know, ADP report. Like, how can you be so off? Right, so if it happens that NFP agrees, and remember the targets now because of what ADP has done as well, has put NFP under pressure. If ADP found, this is what I was trying to say in the public telegram group, if they found 475K jobs, they actually found them, right? Then, you know, NFP's focus for 407 is an easy beat. Do you understand? If NFP finds at least the 475 jobs that ADP has already claimed they found, then NFP is already positive just based on this number. But if NFP comes back crazy, like last month, which was even bigger, like a 500, what, what, what was it like a, a, no, a 510k beat, 
No, it's even more positive. Both scenarios will see our dollar pushing up. Now, if you look at the DXY chart on the daily time frame, we have a, a red candlestick from yesterday that went up, right? Took out a supply and then, you know, seller started to push down into this gap here. And I keep telling you guys most of the time, all the time, that as long as it is not a reversal pattern, so if price is not about to reverse and go to the downside and it would, it would reverse the most because it's reacting to a supply. But since that supply has been taken out, we, we can't really say we've got a reversal pattern. We know that there'll be a market inefficiency that requires this week to be filled with a body in the next candlestick, which means for intraday traders, 15 minutes, five minutes, blah, 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 one hour, all, everyone is just looking for buy setup today in the dollar, right? As far as I know, most technical traders are looking for buy setups. In fact, most of them have probably started buying since market, the London session has already opened, you know, and, and they're buying as much as they can when they can. Right, and we've got this interesting gap on the one hour time frame, which in my humble opinion, as you know, I know for a fact, generally speaking, needs to be filled. Markets always fill their gaps, right? It can be a crazy long week like this, right? And you can imagine if NFP does something like this, is positive, but before it goes up, it spikes down, it will liquidate you, it will liquidate me, it will liquidate everybody. That's why allow the news to come, watch the levels of where price bounces, and within the next three to four hours on the smaller time frames, markets will come back to reconfirm a demand or to reconfirm a supply just based on that news. And you simply take the trade there. You never take the trade here in anticipation of an upward movement. Even today, where we are almost sure that NFP is going to be positive because of what ADP has done, we do not know the extent to which they will want to use these reports to manipulate money. So we let them move first. Module one, I spent so many weeks telling you our strategy is smart money moves first, we follow suit. If at 3.30 p.m. you come here, you draw some zones at 3 o'clock, you will see where money moves from. If you will see the news, you will see if it's positive, they'll, re they'll react. And then when they react, you will start to apply your basics. Where would price come back for a fresh touch, for a retest? It normally happens on the same day on the smaller time frame. Within 15 minutes, you'll find a nice big demand or a nice big supply. You put your stop loss in a healthy space and you take that trade. You can close it at about 10 p.m. on Friday night. If it allows you to potentially swing, you can then swing it into next week. Right? It all just depends on the structure in front of you. Right, but with this gap here, you know, I feel like 2 p.m. today is going to be quite interesting. Right, you can see that markets have kind of like leveled to the upside and slowly but surely pushing down. So whoever is buying this gap might be buying a novice gap. Right, the best way to trade gaps is to understand first of all the direction in which they're pushing price. And so a better trade idea would potentially be to wait at these lower demands. Potentially, uh, uh, granted, you know, you know, somewhere here would be, you know, you know what some traders would want to presumably call it double bottom ish right something like that w would be safer in my humble opinion that's number one number two every time we've had gaps this week and this week has been the week of the gap you will notice that uh, akini hashi candles are so much better to use uh in finding out hidden hidden demands and hidden supplies in fact um a, a lot of traders who, who i spoke to on the public telegram group they sent me their entry points on euro usd I'll try and cover that right now um, um, for, for potential buys. Just switch to Akin Hashi and see much more clearly. So now I know inside, just at the very beginning of the gap, I have now found a much more healthier demand. We can see this is a strong, powerful imbalance. There's not a bullish engulfing pattern, but the imbalance rules are, are match and apply very well. And so it is my humble opinion. You see, Akin Hashi will print, right? So you won't see the gap, but Akin Hashi will give you the gap. And, and it gives you a, a beautiful story. It's like, look, man, this is what price has done in the last, you know, 24 hours on the 50 minute time frame. Markets have simply moved, like you always say, from supply to demand, demand to supply. We made contact with the supply. Now we're coming back down. Yes, somewhere in here, our brokers could not catch up with the type of volatility when FOMC was speaking and the impact of his speech. And so because of that, there was a gap, but we can print through the gap and you can see clearly Right, that you know, rather than buying here right now at 9 a.m. in the London session, right, and running straight into a demand, right, a, a safer buy is somewhere there 
with a stop loss somewhere outside there, right? If, if you're into buying the dollar. Personally, I never take trades 24 hours before NFP. I wait for the dust to settle unless if the trade is so freaking obvious and buying it or selling the asset right now would allow me to get more run-ins plus volatility tomorrow. Ooh, right, so now EURUSD, our first uh, trade setup of the day. EURUSD, you know, we are now low in the curve, guys. We are absolutely low in the curve. We're hammered by the wall. And I'm talking about people wanting to swing sell EURUSD like me. One more last time. And just so we're clear, isn't it a perfect time to also reflect had we not closed our Euro USD positive sales in November last year when I was doing that, uh, uh, um, you know, that big challenge I was doing last year, December, and we just kept those sales running, right? All of this would be money, our money. I just want to show you where November was, where we were in November. So it's January. Uh, okay, it's going to take time on one hour time frame, but now I'm in November. So when we close somewhere here, this used to be green, this used to be a demand once upon a time in October, September. And we closed here from selling all the way up there. All of this would be swing money that we're still holding today. And we would not be begging for bread, right? Begging for bread in the sense that we are we are looking and waiting for another entry, right? So, so, so this is kind of like the stuff we wanna by the second financial quarter we wanna have positional swing trades, right? I mean, no one thought there was gonna be a war this year, but anyways, it's happened. But we want we wanna be in a place where. We are, we are financially stable, right? So yesterday we looked at price when we looked at Euro USD, and I told you that I had no intention of selling here, right? So markets ripped through it and maybe, maybe had I been more risk averse, I would have taken a sell at the supply above, right? And, and the truth of the matter is whenever markets are given an option of two supplies, they always go for the higher one, right? So this is what price did literally yesterday. Um, I, I, I had no interest in selling anything here, right? And I completely ignored that. But markets used it at about 6 p.m. last night and price has been dropping ever since, right? So this was not technically a trade idea that I gave. So I don't know if anyone is in it, but I'm definitely not. You know, me being stubborn, I'm, I'm still waiting up there for better sales. But the problem now is, you know, in the bigger picture, Let's just quickly go to Saxo, my teaching charts, right? So we are, we, 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 when, I, when I was looking at the New York session with senior traders, we realized yesterday that we are actually now very low in the curve, right? The supply and demand curve uh, uh, in our module two, but I've used the, the recent phase, the recent legs, right? So it's not a complete supply and demand on the monthly. I've just phased it out on the recent ups and downs, the swings between governing supply and governing demand. And you can see now we're absolutely in, in, in buyer territory, right? This is extremely bullish. This is historic money, right? This is the rally. There is risk, risk on rally from March 2020. You will see this across every chart. So pound USD is something similar. Right. AUD USD, like all, 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 all these trades have something similar. And then you've got pound that is still so far away from that March rally, right? You can see the March rally for pound USD is all the way down here, April, March, down here, right? So, 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 so there's still a trade sell idea in pound USD. If it's ever going to catch up with Euro USD, there's still a, a strong, strong sell idea. Right. So, I don't know. We'll see. But this is the, I, I potentially believe we could swing this long term. Right. So now let's go back to Euro USD and then see what we think is going to happen between today and NFP. Because that's that's definitely coming. Right. Switch back to our one hour time frames. Right. So and, and I bring this up because, you know, buying looks very attractive right now because we are pretty much I'm pretty sure we've made contact with the with the with, with the governing chart here I'm, we have made some type of contact i mean it's nowhere close to what we would call a multiple time frame analysis scenario okay we're close enough that's the governor the red line there then on the weekly you can see on the weekly it drops quite a bit right let's say you target that week on the weekly but it's still not good enough because you're going to see on the daily there'll be a better you know you know setup Right, and then on the daily, the thing that you're touching there on the weekly is the beginning of complicated 365 candles, and so swing traders would start buying from somewhere down there. All right, so let's make this line very thick. 
so that on the one hour time frame we are completely aware of it i'm going to mark it black i'm going to give it you know something so so this is probably where you know your governing swing buys would start and then the, the question is always well what do you think now should we then sell all the way down there well don't forget what makes a perfect buy setup is the influx of dumb money a perfect buy setup is perfect because of that value-based demand that i teach you guys on in module two right so a perfect buy setup is this dumb money starting to sell low on the curve into a demand and then get liquidated and then price uses all that money and the money that they have at those levels to push price up so you don't always want to be leading the war or, or, or the march in a low market or uh, in a low curve market for, for, for more sales getting very dangerous and dangerous to sell on the smaller time frames yes the argument is there's a lot of pips to be gained and i completely agree with that but just be very careful because you're now remember this is just a daily demand that we are targeting it's 175 pips away but the weekly demand is somewhere here 115 pips away and the monthly demand is probably somewhere here right 46 pips away so once you bridge this area you are now fully immersed in buyer territory when they start to react with your with your sales would be a big problem right and, and another thing that we should never consider still outside the table is the fact that nfp could be negative then what then you've got a terribly weak dollar and a strong euro or euro usd reacting on a governing demand right then what then what happens because remember the fed needs a good reason right now powell said we're going to take it a little bit more steady now because we have a war we might not need to be that aggressive we have to see right we have to see let's see what the job numbers say let's see what inflation numbers have to say we have to see so if anyone is preparing themselves to change their minds they will be using friday's report and next week tuesday's report with cpi right so this is where markets are opening now markets are opening red on the day there is definitely you know you know you know as some type of demand on the table here it's not a significant open session demand you can see that price keeps creating lower lows right euro is just in a rush to, to make contact there but for the most part markets have also you know made contact with the last two supplies that were close by broke the supply made contact with the supply and so if you were to look for a sell idea and you were to ask specifically me my answer from yesterday would not change at all it would be more reinforced because now right i don't want to sell here because that's a pcp it's been taxed a one hour pcp this lower supply was already broken which shows you the resilience of whoever is buying this bottom right someone here who keeps buying this bottom is quite resilient and so if i want to sell i still want to sell somewhere up there short term better here but definitely have to take that 15 minute gray area that we carved out together which i won't you know waste my time and then see because this would for me setting a whole lot higher there and then coming all the way down here for me would be so much better but this trade idea for me is also undoubtedly undoubtedly affected right by 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 nfp now if i could just quickly bore you and say within the last two days right if we're looking at bull rallies so we're just going to quickly look at these bull rallies uh in euro in euro usd and something called scenario now so i'm talking about one that's the only bull rally so far and then we're going to find another one we're going to find another one further up there but we just want to see how many pips in 24 hours or two days so that's 165 pips to the upside right so so markets when markets commit on a short term they do a 165 pip. it's an estimation right you can get we will we, we'll never get the exact numbers right there's another similar strong one started the day before and then went into a supply so from there to there that's 75 then price came back down on the exact same day 75 plus and then oh, come on man sorry 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 there we go 75 plus you know found some type of catchment here and reacted to another supply somewhere in there plus another 40 pips so that's about 110 so we had 165 we had 110 and this wasn't even a strong bull rally but it happened nonetheless and then most of it is just downward right then you get days like these this is four o'clock where markets just went wild right so let's say perchance you know nfp is negative that's what i'm trying to figure out i'm trying to say 
If NFP is negative and Euro USD is all the way down here, is there enough sentiment and historical measure for price to pump up 128 pips? Absolutely, right? Because we've seen it. Even though markets have been down during a war, there was a war going on last week on the 24th of February. Within two days, markets jumped up 165 pips to the upside. So I don't need to believe that the sale is so far. Even the sale up here, it's only 162. It would literally match this leg, right? This 165 rally would match all the way up there. So I would still only want to sell there. I still believe that markets can find enough buy pressure all the way up here. And these could be the last few buys uh, into the sales. Last few buys into the sales will see Euro USD in a very long time. Because soon after that, Euro USD, if its governor is, 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 no, is completely activated, will slowly start the process of creating lower lows, right? Slowly start that process of creating lower lows. So trade idea for the day is personally, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to see the impact of NFP. I'm going to wait to see if price can push me up here. If NFP is negative, ladies and gentlemen, this is even a bigger reality, right? If it, NFP sorry, it's positive, that's 174. And I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me that 174 pips going down is easy for Euro USD. Going down, look at this. There to there, that's 174. There to there, that's 174. So if NFP comes out positive, like ADP is saying, hi, Lira, I'm not sure of which chart you're focusing on. Are you able to touch on? Yeah, 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 sure. Sure, not a problem. I, I'll, I'll definitely do that for you towards the end. Thank you for that. Right, so 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 look at this. This is 74 pips, and I think I should move on, right? I'm teaching too much. Sorry, guys. I am teaching quite a bit today. Right, so that's 174 pips. So it's it's very possible. It's it's extremely likely that if we get an NFP, you know, situation uh, uh, where, 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 where ADP is on the money this time and everything is accurately fine, we will get a strong shift to the downside as the dollar, you know, regains its its usual momentum, right? So if we get this today. Let's go do that right and then if i can to grab this pattern to the upside right so sometime today markets kind of like rally retesting this I, i've just given you guys a ghost version of of market movement right i don't know if you guys understand what i'm doing you can see there's a strong movement right and and actually you know a clean retest where i would look something like that that's a good movement to the downside that's a very good movement to the downside right and, and, and honestly it's all based on how markets price in uh, um, the NFP that's going to drop in 24 hours. So that's Euro USD. If everyone's okay with that, I'd love to happily move on. You know, just because of time, we've got quite a number of assets to look at that I'd love to go through, right? So there's tomorrow's 9 a.m., right? So you, you could get a movement like this in a, a, a little bit deeper dig into the, the governing demand. And then after that, guys, I guarantee you it'll be dangerous to sell any further, right? So we'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But I definitely don't want to sell here. Markets can sell there. They sold there yesterday, right? Markets are now creating a PCP. By the way, right here in front of us, as markets are opening, if you go to the 15 minute time frame, you will see there's some type of PCP formation. So if you feel like the sentiment is bearish, right, on the 15 minute time frame, you could talk about unmitigated areas here. You could also say, well, let's see. Leroy, what about you know just 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 bringing that about and then you can try and wait there today right if you feel strongly about about selling euro usd now and, and not having to wait right if, if you don't like the fact that i'm so risk sensitive and you don't want to wait for a very clean long-term drop and you feel like it might not come right what if nfp is negative or whatever or you need to trade today right then this is the only place for me what a one do should be willing to take a risk right a high risk right somewhere up here right so so nothing in between uh, uh this would be a good place to wait for price right so given the opening though we are opening in a pcp right a talitha range to the downside but we are doing that on top of the demand which always reminds me of the fact that well then markets seemingly still want to go down if they're not reacting to the demand you know as positively as we'd like to see on the 15 minutes time frame, right? But that's Euro USD, you know, dealer's choice. I'll be waiting, not here, not there, all the way up there. That's where I'll be waiting. But they, they, there's, a, there's a potential, right? A potential for this to 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 kind of like give you something like this today. Um, but it looks risky for me.
too risky. Too, too risky. Right, next chart, euro pound. And I will not be taking as much time as I did there. Um, right, so euro pound, seemingly, like I said yesterday, and I keep telling you guys, you know, only cowboys are taking buys. Uh, I'm not a cowboy. I don't want to be a cowboy. Um, all these demands. Remember, the gray was a daily demand that was broken, that we covered on Monday or whatever. We spoke about it. We should remove it now because it's just too much color. And then the plastic demand that they put on top was also broken. And then I just want to see what this white line is that we have here where price is now. I think I showed you guys where price is sitting, some type of flow. Yeah. Right, the last you know line of defense from from a mile, like you can't see anything else. Right after all of this, on the daily time frame, euro pound, it's it's, it's that it's that supply that we wanted to give up and that demand that we want to see. Right, there's nothing else here on the daily time frame, and this really translates to a bigger, bigger, bigger sell off. Right, there's nothing on the weekly catching price, and if you look on the monthly, which should give you a general idea of why I told you guys that this was just a purely beautiful sell trade you can see i've got sell 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 everywhere right so this is what it looks like now on a governing perspective right excuse me like price is really 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 moving extremely extremely down towards the downside right really sweeping off all these flows this, this is definitely much lower now than this previous low and all we have to do in the month of march is to go a little bit lower here we'll now have our own bearish engulfing pattern Right, and that very few golfing pattern will signal a strong deep dive to the downside. Weekly, daily for what we really want to see. Right, so this is this long term self pressure. We've covered this, you know, extensively in war rooms and in our one on one sessions. Uh, um, uh, so our, our, our smaller time frame sessions is what I mean to say. There's still a gap up there. A part of me believes this would be where the, the, the greatest swing trade would happen, right? Because there's, there's a lot of market inefficiency. This gap there up there, you know, that being filled would be a good trade idea for a, a swing trade. Uh, but it's nowhere, it's not secured, right? It's nowhere close to a daily supply, right? Somewhere up here. That's the only annoying part about it, right? Because if it was, it was, if it was embedded in a daily supply, then that would definitely be a long-term trade idea, you know, something like this. Yeah, it's just above, all right? And this one is it, broken, all right? All right, so we'll see how that plays out in the long term. But in the H4 time frame, we're definitely getting some strong sell vibes all the way up there. And then since then, price has been moving down, right? So now, you know, you know, we're with the risk of ignoring what we have in front of us, which is a, an, an absolute need for, 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 for filling up this gap. One would want to take a risk there, right? But bearing in mind that that supply is in the way, it's in the way of, of price reaching its goals, which is to fill the gap. So it's not really a trade idea I'm giving out. It's just me letting you know exactly what price is signaling, right? If you go to Kinehashi for me, for a second, you will see that definitely, 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 this is a good place to potentially sell. If there wasn't this entire massive supply that broke market structure here and then pushed price to, to the downside, right? The question is, well, Leroy, what could possibly bring Euro pound all the way back up there? Because that's a big ask in price. And that's kind of like where people kind of like give up because they, they, they think all their pending orders need to be triggered at the same time. That's 115 pip rise in price. What could make euro for the short term be so strong to come back all the way up there? Well, we've got a similar thing with euro USD, right? We want euro USD to climb 165 pips. And the only way it can climb that is a negative NFP, right? Or, or, or some serious dollar weakness. If the dollar ever reaches a supply, right? A monthly supply, a weekly supply, which we know is coming not today not tomorrow but is around the corner so i wouldn't i wouldn't give up on the sell uh, uh area but now let's say markets um uh today or tomorrow started to offer us a a swing low curve right then you'll start to, to draw your fibonacci's you know somewhere here the markets have not given us a swing low yet or have they all right cool i'll take that as a swing low Right, so you've got a swing high, swing low, right? Then you can see your golden ratio area is also screaming for some action here. 
the right as well. So it could potentially be a, a trade where you're willing to risk some some money, but not a lot of money or not all your money, right? Where where you tell yourself, well, what if markets do something like this in the short term? Right? And then, you know, go back up or, or something. Then you want to catch this trade quickly uh, in the downturn for now and then also not take the trade when price comes back here in case price wants to fill that market efficiency and then that's the second sell trade you want to take. And that's probably how I'm going to play Euro USD. Um, not yet sure about this area yet, but in terms of mitigation, it looks clean. Like it, it does look like, you know, an area of value. You've, you've got dump buyers, you've got a short term base, you've got a strong rally. It does look like a place where price would want to come back. So for my short time frames, the things that I really want to enter, I mark them gray, right, for now, so that I don't get confused with my yellow for swing trade. Right, so we, we, we've got some action there. i would look into that. Leroy, does this mean you're going to buy for price to go up? Nope. I'm not. I, 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 guys, I'm, I, I'm probably like the most annoying human being right now to produce trading content because I'm not going after short-term gains. Um, and, and that's only because, you know, I, I, I generally, I've seen this work out, you know, and I've seen its, it, its reliability, right? A lot of people get very, very impressed um, with people who trade, you know, rapidly or use a lot of entries and a lot of lot sizes or simply trade on demo. And they simply translate that to your money. It's it, for me. It's not. I, I can't buy this up because it's in a downtrend. It makes no sense, right? I, I don't get to decide. People were buying up here, right? How many times were they taken out before markets arrived up there? And then when markets arrived up there, how many times did the people who bought the market wake up with their stop loss being taken out when the next Monday markets gapped to the downside? Like this is the logic you want to avoid. You know, being a victim of. of, of games that price plays, especially with Euro Pound. I mean, Euro Pound has no problem going up for 94 pips only to go down, right, in almost the same breath, uh, uh, you know, in, the, in, in literally just 48 hours, you know, with the difference of the weekend, another 194 pips to the downside. It is literally, we push up to push down. We push up to push down. We push really, really up to push really, really down. But in all in all, markets keep breaking lows, right? So markets do want to go down. Uh, they did break the rule here and make a higher high, but they quickly fixed it by going a little bit lower. If you scroll all the way back, we push high just to go down, right? And it's just been, we've been going down, but we first had to push up. So I don't want to be caught up in, you know, on the wrong side of a trend. So I'm happy to wait for my, my setups to play out. EuroCAD is the next one. Pretty sure we've got a chart. There we go. Right, clean, clean taking out of demands. Even this risky trade that we spoke about, I think yesterday, right? Clean trade. Price did go a little bit up, but there was no ways you could have made money. So we were right to want to wait up there. I think it's important and prudent to take out any demands that have been broken, because all they do is 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 you know offer terrible guidance right all these demands are gone broken broken and markets are trading by the white line so the only demand that is now standing on the daily time frame is somewhere up here but we all know that all europe pairs are tanking down so the next time we can wait for a full term strong retracement is all the way down there as you can see man every day has been a red day for almost two weeks on eurocad why oil Oil is doing extremely well, right? And because oil is doing extremely well, CAD, the, the, the second component of this trade, EuroCAD, is very strong. Against uh, the Euro, definitely CAD is doing well. Beautiful sell setup all the way up there. Would you take this buy down here? I don't think so. Excuse me. Let's see. Let's see what it looks like on, on the weekly. Mm. That's quite nice. On the weekly, that's quite nice. But let's let, let's have a look at history at how it dealt with other weekly demands. Price went up for about two to three weeks, only to come back down. Bullish engulfing pattern, only to get negated. So you could make a couple of pips all the way up here. Uh, a short-term demand, literally exiting here where markets forgot. So you'd be trading with retail traders. Retail traders would start to want to sell there because they will foreseeably see a 
a resistance, a ceiling of price, right? Where markets previously were, it was a demand, but the demand got broken, right? So if you wanted those short-term pips, you could. Uh, not my style of trading, though, just so we're all clear. But uh, on the daily time frame, you would then want to see that because this red is way too much, right? Too much red. Like when markets do too much red, at some point they start to range, they start to go crazy, and they try to feel, they try to mitigate all of this, right? So at some point in time, we'll start to see green candles. So as usual, you know, a lot of these things are now completely outside of our reach, or they are what we would say within the lower curve. If you look at the H4 chart, there's even a better supply somewhere up here, but I see it's been tagged and potentially broken. But there was a supply up there, and then markets, I think roughly yesterday or the 1st of March, whenever that was, two days ago, you know, created a new order block, right? And this could be the first line of defense. It won't last, it won't hold, it's too close to the curve, right? So you could get something like that on EuroCAD. It just depends, right? Uh, we ever, like, I think Trevor asked me in the private group, I told people that, you know, oil is arrived at $100 as a governing supply. I wrote a long message to the public telegram group because one of the students asked me why. And I said, even though that's the case, this oil is just one of those things I will not be selling. I will not be selling oil. And I explained why. So as long as oil keeps ripping through these daily, weekly governing supplies, right, it means the sentiment is so strong that all that scarcity, the fear that oil could cut off, that Russia could stop supplying people with oil. America, we saw in the headline, is trying to reduce oil Russian consumption. It means oil has got a very long-term bullish run, right? All these energies in general, in general, like all these oil, Brent, natural gas, all these things are going to do very well. Look at this, 115. Guys, we literally were 98 on Friday last week, you know, we're already on 115. Uh, outside of a war, it would have taken us about two months to get to this number. All right, so $5 more to 120 isn't too far. But even then, even then, I won't be rushing to sell uh, um, oil, right? I'll be looking for retracement, right? Up until this war is potentially over, right? So because of that, you know, it might be wise to sell EuroCAD here because of that. Because of that, only because right now it does not look like, you know, in any eventuality that, you know, Euro against the CAD is going to gain any type of strength. So naturally, I would ignore this, ignore that, ignore this, ignore all of that junk and come wait somewhere in here. All right. Because it's got confluence with the H4, uh, you know, time frame. And then if this doesn't work, unfortunately, for whatever reason, then my next supply will be there for Euro CAD. Right. But there's no point in me drawing anything else because I'm not going to buy. I will not be buying EuroCAD up. Euro NZD. We had a swing by here. God knows when. It's bad. Look at that. Right, Rich. Short reaction to our PCP supply instead is created. This is a good thing to wait for now. Right, like it's just bad across. I mean, risky assets, are, especially Euro. Right, the, the way that Euro USD is now forsaken, you know, any weekly supplies and is running for demands. This is, I mean, I, I know I'm touching our, 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 our war room chart for swing, but I might as well just quickly auto correct this chart. This is a good place to wait now. This is the next strong supply that predominantly took out a market structure, a strong market structure, right? A daily area somewhere here. And so, what you really want as a swing trader now is if it's gonna be there, sure, for markets to come back down. And as long as the sentiment is still on your side at that time, price should continue. But since we're on the weekly chart, on the swing chart, sorry, the war room chart, let's quickly have a look. On the weekly time frame, we have this area here. So that's what we're saying. We're saying price returns there. And on the governing time frame, The governing time frame, we have nothing for a very long time. On the governing time frame, we actually want price to come all the way down here. So, oh my goodness, this could be a very good swing trade. This could be a very good swing sell setup, right? Remember this. This could be a perfect swing sell setup. Now, if I draw a swing low here on the daily into the demand, so let's say there was some type of reaction here where markets were to start. This is still a bit below. I don't know if price would best if you take out this demand, right? We, we, okay, I can't gauge a strong um, um, area of value, technically speaking, 
on 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 um you know Fibonacci on, on this area here. I honestly cannot, but it would be very much advisable to keep this chart, uh, you know, sorry, this chart on your watch list. Very much advisable to keep this chart or, or, or on your watch list for swing trades. I'm just making a quick note here. Right, so there we go. We got Euro NZD sorted, right. Uh, now, let's go to Euro NZD in the short time frame, short time frame, right. So with this area here that we spoke about, we took out, yes, we still wanna sell, and you can see in yesterday's charts, right, we knew that we're coming a little bit lower here, which is what we've been talking about. Let's go to the one hour time frame and see. Clean spike, ah, oh, man. I mean, I, I didn't even take the trade, but still. So markets launched up here for a higher supply. I can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So markets launched up here for a far much more higher supply. This would have been a nice trade to take though, granted. I mean, I, I don't think there's no ways I would have survived this, right? This is just above our supply unless if we were, you know, methodological enough to target these yellow zones for higher supply. But markets did come here yesterday and markets are dropping nonstop. Last night, yesterday, I'm sorry, I was stuck in meetings as you guys would know. Right, since then, price has been dropping nonstop. Price has been dropping nonstop. Uh, okay, and the H4 time frame. I apologize. I don't know how my little girl has snuck into the office. You are going to hear her. <laughs> Not much I can do right now. Right, so we, we, we've got we've got a continuous drop to the downside. I'm just gonna quickly draw these lines. Uh, let's go to one hour. Let's go to normal candlesticks. How far are we? All right, so first of March. Oh, sorry, the, that takeout was did not happen yesterday. This didn't happen yesterday. It happened last week, so on Monday or or something. Right, but yeah, in any case, this was very good. This was a very good trade, and we waited a little bit higher. If anyone took it, um, I, I don't have a profit or loss from your NZT. Oh, you could have been taken out there as well, right? So this is all going on, and this is where we are today. Right, so look, man, again, we're long the curve, you know, all the good, nice trades are gone. Uh, but if you wanted to take some strong risks, I, like every single euro setup, we have this cluster here, do nothing, and then we have this temptation here, right? Somewhere there to try, and then obviously, somewhere there will be better. You, you can split your risks, but just know this is very risky. This is very risky, right? It's too low on the curve. But the benefit of all of this is that markets do obey and come back down there. Again, it will be based on how Euro reacts to, to um, um, NFP, right? Or one of those two options, right? It will just be based on the NFP report and also how markets price in NFP based on how dollar opens today at 2 o'clock. This could be a good place. Generally speaking, depending on your capital, because you're always going to go for 1 is to 3. A lot of people don't understand that. If you look at that AUD setup, uh, AUD CAD, I have two sell orders. If you take me out on the first lower supply, which is not a good way to trade, but if you do take me out on the first lower supply, but you happen to trigger the second higher supply, the distance that I lose in the market is between my entry point to here. So that's what I'm going to get charged in pips. That's what I'm going to lose. All right. I'm hoping everyone is following. But if you spike me in here, then on our way down, this distance from the higher supply to where you took me out, I've already made up the loss and I've made a bit of profit. And if the journey continues down to wherever I'm swinging, then it doesn't really matter. In terms of averaging out in cluster trading, you still make a lot of money, right? So, so that's why I'm saying be very careful. Don't never, never take, it's avoided, it can be avoided. Do not take these immediate supplies that are so close by. But because of risk sentiment and you're just wanting to drop down and down and down, it's seemingly using these shorter supplies but breaking them. So to do a strong spike and then drop, like we've seen in like three or four other charts there. So what I'm saying is just be very careful, be generous with your stop loss, and also be very strict with your risking 
but also then have a good cell set up here, which makes more sense. Remember, if NFP is negative, the strength of the euro would be unimaginable. It will it'll just rip through this area, right, in the short term. And then sooner or rather than later, it will continue on its path, right? So I'm going to leave that there as euro and the D. Pound AUD. Right, markets, even pound, not doing that great. I just want to see the green. What's the green? Is it a daily demand? Right, so we've arrived at, you know, a very, very interesting place. Daily demand for the pound. And actually, yesterday was the first time markets reacted to this daily demand uh, the whole day. Look at this. Right, we had a doji candle that's been immediately filled. So today is what? Thursday. So next week, Tuesday, this could be a potential new supply that takes out this entire demand, right? So if, we, if, if tomorrow is the same as always, we're going to get a red candle. Then on Monday, we're going to get another red candle. Then by Tuesday, we're going to get some clarity. And then Wednesday next week for swing, Wednesday to Thursday, right? Like a whole week total, we might get a push to the upside by Friday next week. We're talking about selling this asset again because it's taken out of demand, right? So that's one way to kind of like view this particular pattern, right? Because remember, if buying was excruciatingly so uh, strong and the sentiment allowed for it to happen, right? Markets should be starting to react to a V-shaped recovery. There is a lower buy, a better buy, but that's where all this price action has set on in the past, right? All this price action set on here in the past some supply and demand traders will tell you that this is still a fresh uh you know a run so it's, it's, it's not it's, it's not a fresh touch it's not a retest it's price giving us the imbalance right to move away from the area of value which means we are to expect a fresh touch soon here all right and, and you know with this bearish and golfing patterns they don't need too much of an imbalance for us to view them as strong right so for the most part until then in the short term run pound aud is still weak uh, uh one wonders why aud is still doing so well because it really is um you know it's, it's actually quite shocking sorry let me just go back to h4 so this gray box is the whole daily new supply from yesterday and today's candlestick i'm going to remove that because it's just blinding right so and then i'm just going to quickly switch here right so if we just look at yesterday and we look at the swing high swing low from yesterday we would notice that you know markets have been operating in extensive uh, uh, uh you know areas like from i guess the 20th of february all the way down it's just just been uncomfortable right markets have been trying to retrace up these areas although i removed them You'll note that this is one of those either 37,8 or 27,8 areas of value where price really just wouldn't stop. Uh, you know, the strong retracements and price went back. This is what you call your PCP things, which which makes you know you know it, it makes sense. But they've been broken. So if markets were to rally again, you know, based on yesterday's swing low, because price might make a new swing low today, but based on yesterday's swing low over here markets could rally all the way up back to these areas right so you might want to target this one and not this one right or you might want to have a swing entry like this with a stop loss above that one something like that um for further downside push of the pound right pound is weak because of its connection to euro euro is where the war is happening this makes sense right so that's fine still gonna have to wait for those setups euro jpy on the short term, Euro JPY. Uh, I mean, guys, I, I think this has been like one of the best money maker charts, you know, in, in a lot. It's in, in these morning sessions. Let me talk about the morning sessions, and then we'll talk about, you know, as a swing trade, we missed it. You know, as a swing trade, remember our entries are somewhere up there. We never got triggered. But since we started doing these 9 a.m. supplies and stuff like that that I mapped out in these London sessions, this has been one of the greatest, cleanest trades. Um, um, you know, and, and of course I, I thoroughly, thoroughly wholeheartedly regret, you know, taking profits last week, Friday. Um, I, I should have just let this keep running into to, to this week, but ever since then, I still have not been entered until yesterday. Yesterday we spoke about this gray box here. Remember we broke it down. I showed you guys 15 minutes, five minutes, one minute, 
I told you guys a little bit of week off uh, distribution and markets tried. You know, I was sitting, you know, at my, because it was about 6 p.m. I was done with the day and markets tried to come to my, to my, to our gray box. Let me just show you this gray box on the 50 minutes time frame just to refresh your memory. Right. So we're looking for distribution, right? And this is, the last supply, this entire yellow box is our golden Fibonacci area. And inside there is an order block, an order block, an order block. And markets really tried to get there. Like I was thoroughly, thoroughly, you know, impressed with the effort. Then markets kind of like, you know, traded sideways a bit. And so I, I'm holding on to this. You know, I am really am holding on to this and hoping to get triggered today, tomorrow. We shall see, right? Remember, Euro is weak. JPY is a safe haven. Things are bad, right? So a strong JPY for its safe haven capabilities should keep driving Euro down, right? We just want to make sure we go down with Euro. You can see that markets were leaving a Euro JPY demand. It could be one of the daily demands, right? And my price has really, really left some strong buying pressure there down there. This is a piece, was a PCP, then became a bearish engulfing pattern and our markets are trying to test that, right? So just be careful of this confusing setup here on the H4 time frame. But I would really appreciate a strong link to the downside. But if we don't get it, you know, and this becomes a PCP, then it means buying here was agreed upon, buying here has now been agreed upon, and then markets are now going to continue up, right? But until then, we have no evidence of a very strong uptrend right now. We don't have that in structure. We don't have higher highs forming. We've only got lower lows. So just watch it. Like every other euro chart, we are all low on the curve. We are very much low on the curve, right? So be very careful about that. If you look at monthly, this is, come on, man. Right, if you look at monthly, Look at how it treated this bearishing government pattern, almost like retested it, then kind of tried to close below. And then only now are we leaving, you know, the supply that was formed and finalized last year, November, only now. And if you look at how far we could go with this trade, I mean, if you really were to get seated in a very safe, you know, you know, you know, intraday, small, you know, time frame, have about two positions running, one that you're going to take profits when things get hot and one that you're just going to break even. And when things get hot, hope they get hot, but not too hot for you to get kicked out and swing that trade. That would be a blessing because this still has a long way to go. All right. This is a long way to go. The Bank of Japan came out and said they will only consider changing their interest rate for JPY in October. So until then, we can assume that the status quo of our safe haven asset won't change. So as you sell it, finding sales and holding them all the way down there is a great idea. But no, this is not the platform for that. We'll talk about that on Sunday in the war room. For, for, for intraday trades, I'm waiting for this. I'm doing nothing. I'm not buying. I'm going to wait to see how, how, how price plays out. Remember, for better risk reward ratio, you want your area small and tight. But because of this cluster and how confusing it can get, you know, price could push to the upside, right? There, there are multiple supplies all the way. So if you treat it like a daily swing, <clears throat> you have to be willing to hold it for about 90 something pips. It's quite big, right? So I'll, I'll take the gray box as cell number one and the stop loss there. And then finally, probably actually just wait here. If this gray box doesn't work, ignore everything else in here and just wait for this imbalance that needs to be mitigated because that also is a good place for price to go, right? This is important to price. This is a strong supply. This is institutional. You know, no one can push price down that shop and then slowly but surely continue and create a downtrend, right? So if this doesn't give us the type of needs we want, and even if it does, right, because of what happened yesterday, before yesterday we looked at this and it happened. But now, where, where, how far can price go, right? This, you know, markets change structure all the time, right? So look now, now there's a strong demand on the opposing end on the one hour time frame. To go H4, does it have confluence? Yes, it does. It's sitting on top of a bullish engulfing pattern, right? So, if, so, so you have to ask yourself, how far can price go? So if you're taking this trade, the one that we have here at, at the beginning, this 15 minute trade, just know, have a good sense of where to get out, right? So this is, what it looks like on the 15 minutes, on the one hour, once again, bullish engulfing pattern. On the 15 minutes, you, you might be lucky to get a, 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 a dip into all the way there. The thing that actually makes the, the 15 minute supply. 
And if you do get that lucky, get out. Take profits. Get out, right? Don't hold uh, because because you're not going to break. You're not going to start swinging out of nowhere, right? Now, when this area is mitigated, the supply here, and all these demands are mitigated, then you want to come for a fresh supply, right? A fresh supply, and you saw this one. No, no, no. This one here. And if you see it on the 15 minutes time frame, you can see why it is dead straight and banking supply. Look at that, just pure clean carnage. And it's at the opening of a session at midnight when the Asian markets open. So that's what you do. You take a short term 15 minutes or take a risk. This could actually blow up in our faces and price still already up there. But this one is definitely gonna get 5% of my account, right? And this one's gonna get about 2.5% to 1% of my account, um, but it's still, is an attractive trade despite the fact that markets ended up creating more demands along the way yesterday right euro aud if this is helping you please don't forget to like the videos euro aud uh let's go let's just go straight to our our day then i'll do FTSE, and then i'll look at the charts aud usd and nzdsd and call it a day right so AUD, your euro aud finally arrived at the green zone we marked out yesterday the demand so uh, low on the curve, so I'm not really excited or looking for, for any type of buying. When I say low on the curve is what I mean. Look at the daily. Look at the daily. But look at how red prices. Oh, my goodness gracious. Guys, ooh, and we, and we swung in here. This is really nice. This is, I'm not in this as a swing, but I'm just saying, had, had we got, got to it on time, that would be nice. Right now, I'm just trying to find where markets balance themselves out. Right, so... We had a fresh touch on this area of value, so this is going to be a nice strong retest. A good retest, as we know, can give us bigger movements than a fresh touch. Now, if we have something like this on the outside, this almost looks like an obvious self setup, in my humble opinion. Uh, uh, it really, really does. So obvious. I have honestly to God no choice but to trust it. I have no choice as a swing trader but to say this is exactly what the rules want me to take. They want me to take only trade setups that look like this, and therefore I will take them. As a swing trader up here, this is golden. Now, in the short term, there are going to be a lot of ups and downs. Let's go to H4. Jeez Louise, right? I mean, this is an obvious trade as well. An obvious trade as well in the short term, right? Markets, if we're to look at the swing high here, and we to start to get a swing low between today and tomorrow from this daily demand, right? We could get something that looks like this. So this, yeah, I don't know, seemingly serves. And unless if the swing low is somewhere down here, you know, if markets start to react, but by down there, they have broken a demand. So we'll wait to draw a Fibonacci with all the improper, you know, you know, trade setups. But this is a trade that I can see working out for a little bit and then taking traders out. I don't trust it at all. Um, too close to the curve, can't get a confirmation tool, um, so I'll leave it alone if I were you, right? And then short-term sales were here on the one hour, but there wasn't much confluence on, on, on H4, so I don't know why we should be bothered with them. But let's quickly assess. Like you see on the one hour, I would not take a sell here. This level has been beaten and abused, right, many times. This one is slightly better, free and clear. Uh, strong, in, you know, strong enough, uh, but markets never got back. And then this new one here, you know, barely a strong bearish and dolphin pattern, barely a powerful high volume drop, although it is a very trendy downward drop. So this is an interesting sell setup, right? Delete this. Oh, th this is where that uh, H4 uh, in the gray, the H4 supply is this gray thing here. If you look at it on H1. It, it, there's not much of a convincing case, right? Well, I mean, what are you looking at? Unless if you're looking at something like this on the H1. And if you come back to H4, that's what you take a risk on, right? So if you really wanted to take this trade, you're more than happy to risk here. I'm just going to make it white. I don't want to confuse myself later on when I'm putting my pending orders uh, uh, to assume that that's a, a place to put to risk 5%. It is not for me. Um, it's just you know a clean one hour potential fresh touch type of trade but it is not really the type of trade that i think would hold price for long so this is definitely a trap that is you know there's already a higher supply so yeah it's worth one percent two percent of your account but definitely not five percent and then we get to that short-term trade that we're seeing now all all the way here i'm not entirely sure about this one as well um um you know it, it could work 
I guess markets do react here, clean imbalance. Yeah, so if this doesn't work 1%, although I don't even think you, sh you can take it, obviously, I mean, it follows the rules, but it's just there's a better supply there. Then for short term traders, this is it. For swing traders, we really want to wait for this golden opportunity. So we're going to be buying and selling. Or really just selling and watching the rallies, selling the rallies up until we get up here. When markets start to create higher lows, ladies and gentlemen, that is when we stop selling, right? When markets start to create higher lows and then an uptrend, we even ignore this sell setup. But because we do this every single day, when the day gets there, we'll be able to review if this is still a good trade idea. Right now, I'm not going to mark anything gray on this chart. Right, AUD, US, no. Let's look at FTSE first, UK 100. And then we will we will we'll venture back into into the two charts that I was asked to look at. It's now way after ten, ladies and gentlemen. It is that time of the day again where we go. I just want to make sure it's the same chart we've been using throughout these things. Right there is the chart we've been using. Right, so we had a gap in the FTSE. We had a couple of traders selling here, and then we had a daily demand. Uh, um, um, immediately push price back. All right, this demand here, and, and you know, as you know, for smaller time frames, you never go against your daily demands, daily supplies. Those daily areas of value are absolutely powerful for short term traders, right? And so, when price exploded, price came back, made contact with the supply wave, other traders were selling in the first place. Prices then dropped, created a new demand, new demand inside another demand on top of the demand, right? So, FTSE is fighting back, and remember, FTSE guys is still in that COVID supply. It's one of the only few indices in the world that is still struggling to get out of that COVID supply. Um, and so maybe it's, it's in a rush to do that, but I, I, I have to say the market sentiment has been a bit tricky, right? You can see that most of the time it starts very weak and then markets, you know, equate up. Very weak during the war, sellers gaining ground and buyers take over, right? So weekly demand, you know, value-based, you know, and this one as well. Right, one, two, three. So, 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 you know, you know, markets have every intention of going a little bit higher, but struggling inside a bearish weekly supply. Right. So, on the daily, we have a couple of demands, and then markets reacting to that today from yesterday's bullish and golfing pattern. Um, good. Who knows what the sent, what's causing the sentiment? When I, I sometimes I run out of positive things to see in the world right now, but the markets will react to something like. And then the such and such a country has agreed to more sanctions and that's more positive because they think it will put an end to this crazy war. Right, so we've got price here on the H4 time frame, edging back up here. We all know that it is silly to try and sell here for the fourth time or the third time rather. It is absolutely silly. So I will not even be talking about any potential sales here. Markets have really done a good job of exhausting that. These lower supplies that price made along the way, as you can see, are being slowly but surely being challenged. Now we've got a daily, you know, an H4, sorry, uh, bullish PCP already challenging that particular supply in there. So just be very, very mindful of that, right? That this could, could not be also another good place to sell. You could get price reacting downwards, right? You could get price reacting downwards, but that would only be to simply find buyers to help price on its overall trip, which seems to me to be for the upside. Markets seemingly want to move towards the heavens, right? In terms of clean target of where price could potentially go to now, very, very annoying to look for. This entire area, like I said, once again, to me, doesn't exist anymore, right? There's all, all the supply in there. Don't don't bother selling. There's no money, right? Do not Do not donate your account here. And so one would start to consider this area, but if you look left, you can also see that area has been, you know, tirelessly, it's tirelessly exhausted. It could work, um, but it's not the type of trade I would take, nothing. So what I would rather do on the FTSE, if I was to trade the FTSE, um, is to see its commitment. So you can see what I mean. Here's a low, here's a higher low, right? So markets are slowly but surely preparing for a bullish run. And so if I was a FTSE, I would take a risk rather in a buy. Bearing in mind that if something, for if one drop a bomb, uh, a nuclear headline, this is, this is literally in London. They they just they just removed Russian uh, indexes from them, right? So there's a lot of bullish positive things happening against Russia uh, that the markets will read as positive sentiment. But if anything terrible happens because of this war, 
this is one of the first assets to tank. Okay, they will tank. Uh, so just be careful. But yeah, there's no sell setups for me. They're just short-term buy setups that I'm seeing. Uh, and you notice I didn't mark anything in gray right now. I didn't mark anything in gray right now. Uh, I'm not overly excited about trading FTSE at all at the moment based on, you know, the little, um, you know, so-called, I guess, activity, right? So you can see a value base test, right? So you might get a retest maybe. This is too close to any of these supplies until this H1, H4, you know, supply is broken. I'm, I can't touch this, right? I can't touch this. But weirdly enough, markets complicated 365 candles did touch it and price went up, right? I don't want to touch this, so I'm going to wait all the way down here on the on the H1 time frame of FTSE, right? For those of you who actually want to take the trade, okay? Right, then the last two charts that I was asked to look at, AUD CAD, no, AUD USD, sorry. We removed it from our, our AM sessions because of, of 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 you know the the possible you know problems that existed with how strong uh aud is going we removed this um uh, and the fact that aad moves the most during the what's it called the asian markets right so so this is why right so uh, obviously the supply was broken and then markets rallied all the way down gapped in um, and then since then, we haven't revisited the AUD. Now, there is, of course, a sell idea of the AUD, which price has arrived at. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And I've been waiting for this. I won't even lie for a very long time. Um, and we have currently now the threat of a strong dollar, right? And I still, still struggle to fully understand. Honestly, if I don't know stuff, I'll tell you guys. I, I don't know what the case is for a strong AUD right now. And maybe the fact that they're not in war, the fact that China is not involved in the mess, because remember when China is in trouble, Australia is in trouble. But I, I mean, I know they had good job numbers. Number one, I know that their cash rate went up by 10%, right? And it met forecast, so that's good for their currency. Uh, but for the most part, I, I don't see a single reason on earth why I would be buying AUD. I am not an AUD USD buyer. I am definitely an AUD USD seller, right? So this is kind of like where I am, right? So so this for me would have probably been triggered a long time ago. Um, I'll just double check my, 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 I haven't looked at my accounts this morning, but I'll, I'll pile that up now and see if my pending order has been triggered. If not, then I'm just going to have to operate as quickly as possible to get it triggered or to find clean sales. Um, and potentially this time around with AUD, because uh, most of the trades that actually haven't worked for me this year have been AUD sales, weirdly enough, right? They keep pushing higher and higher and higher. And so if my, I don't know, my phone is far, but if, if my if my, if my pending order has not yet been triggered, um, then that means I'm waiting for a higher sell somewhere in here. But if it has been triggered, that's fine. But a, a better place to wait for a sell inside this daily, uh so-called supply would be here so just a little bit higher oh come on man just a little bit more patient with aud usd this would be a good place to to kind of like you know you know react to price and then after that we can get the reaction we've been waiting for now along the way as price was going up you know h4 demands were created but the only demand that really I, I'll be worried about is this one somewhere down there, right? So making sure we get some action there. But, but for a swing trade, honestly, AUD to me and to us for a very long time looked, you know, systematically weak for, for, for you know, for the long haul. Uh, you see on the weekly, we don't even have confluence for this type of trade. On the weekly, we have price telling us to come all the way up here on the white line. So be very careful if you take the daily trade, although markets are already reacting to price dropping, markets are already reacting to price dropping. On my terminal, I have my terminal now open. On account one, the one that you guys have, 25K account, I'm just positive on AUD cat. Just give me two seconds. Let me quickly open account two as well and then i'll see if i'm running aud usd right now but i i i i, I don't seem to have been triggered unless i don't i didn't put the pin in order yet i don't know 
okay it's still open in the background right but yeah so this is what we're looking at here on the daily this is cool you make it a little bit tighter that's it right so if there's a pen in order i would have been triggered i just want to see if there is one uh i've got two trades running on account two and they're both aud cat uh so the previous one that was at a, an extensive loss and then markets turned immediately on the second entry so now both cells are running down i do not have aud usd triggered but on my accounts aud daily oh okay cool so let me show you let me show you my my real account actually wouldn't that be just uh 10 times easier wait this is it ever trade all the professional five percent of the account oh yeah there we go so this is my aud chart aud usd chart there so, so i just I, so i want you know full transparency see no lies blah 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 right there you go so so markets are here right now but it simply doesn't bother me um i'm waiting for something a little bit higher there on aud and so that's what i would have given all the students on uh in terms of entries and all that kind of stuff so somewhere up there is what i'm waiting for right until until that happens i guess you know maybe i'll move my stop loss into that but it seems to me i have no interest in taking the trade that's happening right now i mean i could just for for short term right so you could for short term but remember usd is about to get volatile because of nfp on friday so this could be a nice trade to take if nfp comes out negative and AUD is still within the supply area, right? If NFP comes, sorry, positive. NFP comes out positive, positive, strong NFP, and AUD is still within the supply area tomorrow, then you can expect a strong drop, right? But for the most part, it looks like, according to the opinion order, I'm waiting for a higher sell, and that will most likely be in line with 365 rules where you want to trade in line with weekly supplies, daily supplies, etc. So I, I hope that answers your question um, to the person who wanted to know about uh, my position on AUD USD or what I see. Uh, all right, and then uh, if it's okay, we'll just skip the the smaller time frame stuff on that one since I spent so much time. Right, NZD USD uh, similar, similar, similar. As you can see, well, I've I've no live or trades running on NZT USD right now as well. So let's see what I'm thinking or what I was thinking when I put the pin in orders. Right. So any area that's marked red already to me is a red flag because it means potentially I saw that area as potentially weak, right? And maybe we are waiting for it to break, right? So markets definitely, yeah. I I wouldn't take a sell here only because I just don't like what it looks like. It's definitely weak. Uh, let's just look at the on the monthly and this is the last chart guys unfortunately our time is up right so monthly is testing on a bearish engulfing pattern and what we do like about this setup is you know depending on how you view it so if you go like this then this demand here is broken but if you go like this then you'll say the demand is weak but not yet broken right but in any case we, 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 we've got a case for a very weak demand that needs to be dealt with um and 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 you know for the most part yeah that's it is what it is man if the supply holds it's perfect but right now what i didn't like about nct usd was that the confluence run just gave us a lot of weakness so we had a strong weekly uh week and now you've got market efficiencies filling in that gap weakening all the sales uh inside there and then if you look very carefully after that on the weekly time frame if this supply fails there's nothing there's absolutely nothing but this is a weekly candle. This weekly candle could look so different tomorrow, Friday, at the close of the week when NFP drops. Because once again, if the dollar is strong, you're going to see this green candle turn into something like this, a red, uh, you know, inverted hammer, like with so much sell pressure because dollar goes up, NZT goes down. But for the most part, you know, markets are just, you know, on their own technical journey as risky assets. Uh, following suit you can see here on the weekly side of things we did arrive at a long-term demand uh you know long-term uh, you know bearish engulfing that based out into some type of demand and so markets could be still sitting comfortably with some buy orders right but uh, if this fails there's nothing at the top to catch price right so there's a lot of pressure on these two daily supplies to hold this one and this one right so i'm i wouldn't be here but I'll be looking very close for NFP. If NFP is positive, I'll definitely sell there. Right, everybody.
thank you so much for joining watching please don't forget to like subscribe um all the best tomorrow nfp i will give you guys a breakdown of what powell said yesterday for those of you who are interested in like holistic education but it's, it really is just a 15 minute uh, a quick summary uh, so that we can get on with other things happy trading traders thank you so much for watching uh see you tomorrow for the last live session of the week cheers buddy bye bye